Hi, good, hello, welcome everybody. Can I just check you can see my slides in the right view? Yes, we can. Fantastic, thanks. Okay, well, thanks for asking me to come and talk briefly a little bit about the UK Field Epidemiology Training Programme. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about how it works um, and how we collaborate with the RST. Okay, so. So um, the UK FETP, Field Epidemiology Training Programme, like all advanced FETPs globally, is a two-year full-time in-service competency-based fellowship programme. It's all about on-the-job learning, um, learning by doing, and that's complemented by 13 weeks of training, uh, training in modules and conferences. Fellows are based at one of 12 sites across the UK that deliver a routine field epidemiology or national surveillance function. And currently, we recruit between five to eight fellows a year, mostly from uh, scientific career paths or specialist public health training. Um, and this just to give you um, an idea of where our sites are. They are distributed um, across the UK, um, including uh, Northern Ireland and Wales, and hopefully we'll be recruiting um, soon from uh, some new sites as well. Um, so as I said, it's a competency-based program and those competency areas are outbreak investigation, surveillance, research, training and capacity building and communication. So of an obvious residence there with a uh, triple mandate, the RST. Um, and the, uh, underneath those headings is an indication of what the graduation criteria are for fellows going through the program. Uh, so they have to evidence that they are competent in all of these areas. Um, and the, uh, at the bottom there, you can see they also, in addition, have to be able to conduct a multivariable analysis. So the FHP programme objectives are uh, to strengthen capacity and the provision of public health epidemiology. Um, probably just as important, it's also about developing a network of skilled uh, field epidemiologists uh, with a shared sense of purpose and working to common standards um, across the UK um, and Europe, um, given that we sort of started out life as affiliated to the European programme. It's also about raising the profile of field epidemiology in, and embedding it into everyday health protection practice. And that's about making sure that the people who are benefiting from the programme aren't just those who are going through it, but that there are opportunities for people at the sites where the fellows are based to also participate in, in new learning. Um, and, and lastly, but certainly not least, it's about supporting Public Health England's global public health work plan through the provision of fellows and staff as well to support the international response and capacity building. And clearly that very much speaks to the relationship uh, that we have with the RST. Okay, um, let's just move forward. Okay, so a brief history. So we are born into the tradition of the Epidemic Intelligence Service uh, from CDC in the, in the United States. Um, and then in 1995, uh, the European Programme for Intervention Epidemiology was established. Um, and in 1997, importantly, the, the network for the training programmes in epidemiology and public health intervention uh, was established. And that's still very much part of uh, the group that we, we engage with. We actually set up the UK FETP programme in 2011. Um, with the mission to strengthen capacity and provision of public health epi, as I've said. Um, and we did that from the outset as an EPIET associated program, EPIET being the European FETP. Um, in 2016, we became accredited by TEFINET um, and also um, we went into partnership with the UK Public Health Rapid Support Team, um, which um, funds two additional UK FETP fellowships places. And then since 2019, due to our exit from the EU, the UK FETP is now currently a, a standalone programme. So with the relationship with the RST, the partnership, really the vision is that the fellows would be a, a key part of the deployable workforce, uh, but also would play into supporting the work of the RST and our other global public health uh, uh, activities through the future roles that they take on as well. 
so just briefly to say, in terms of our fellows and achievements, we've now graduated 45 fellows through the programme and I've got 14 uh, currently in the programme. And as you can see, they've um, you know, done what it said on the tin, they've investigated lots of outbreaks uh, and participated in surveillance and science communication. Um, they've also undertaken 45 international assignments, um, and I think these have certainly increased in the last few years whilst we've been a partner with the RST, um, but, but, but we have been doing that uh, throughout. So I want to say a little bit about our networks and the relationship uh, with the RST specifically. And mostly as a training program, we see these relationships through the lens of um, the FETP program and training developments. So internally within Public Health England, and I do apologize for all the abbreviations, but to paraphrase what's written on the slide there, um, you know, we work with most parts of Public Health England, including the front-facing uh, health protection teams, HPTs, that part of the service which uh, delivers frontline field epidemiology, our national surveillance centres, and also uh, the centres responsible for looking after environmental threats. So we also work with the environmental epidemiologists as well. We also work within the global public health programmes, working linking with IHR programmes, the UK overseas territories, and of course the RST. In terms of our close neighbours, we work, again, as I've said, with the other UK countries, with ECDC, obviously our relationship with ECDC um, is going through a process of reframing and redevelopment of relationships um, following the change in, uh, in our EU status. Um, we're also, um, working closely with a number of other EU institutes um, such as uh, the Robert Koch Institute in uh, Germany for example and, and many others. Um, and interestingly some of our other partner FETPs are also sort of interested in, in the relationships they have with, uh, with local versions of the uh, rapid support teams. So I think it's a model which has some traction. Um, in terms of wider, we have collaborative FET partners across the world. Obviously, we work, we work with colleagues in, in Canada and Australia, and as I mentioned already with Tefinet. Um, we work with the Tefinet uh, Strategic Development Programme, uh, where the vision really is that all populations are protected by a field epidemiology function and can access um, an FETP programme to help build local capacity, which obviously I'm sure is a shared vision. For, for all of us. Okay, so within all of these relationships and partnerships, as I said, there's a bit of dual purpose. Uh, there's something there about getting stuff done, which obviously is at the end of the day really important. So getting outbreaks investigated, Spain systems strengthened, evidence shared and capacity built. Um, but obviously for our point of view, it's about also delivering a high quality field epi training program with excellent learning opportunities and of course, there is a considerable, much more than I were able to show on the slide, but a considerable overlap between those two uh, goals. Um, so in terms of the RST, um, as I said, the relationship between the FETP and the RST was designed in um, from the beginning um, and has now run successfully for a number of years. Uh, the RST financially supports uh, two fellowship posts and, and then has access to the entire uh, fellowship cohort. And our fellows have the opportunity to deploy with the RST and the RST have fellows to draw on to support their, their response. Um, it also, uh, the relationship helps support the development of the cadre of reservists as people come out of their FETP into their new career posts. Um, many of them will um, contribute, continue to work as a reservist or indeed take on roles directly related to the RST and all of the global public health work. Um, and also there are opportunities for the FETP team to collaborate with the RST um, in things such as capacity building, specifically about FETP uh, development. So I'd say probably I'd say that the deployment opportunities for fellows have been traditionally focused on the acute response, but this is now broadening out across the triple remit much more. Um, also, I think one of the impacts of COVID is we've realised that actually there's potential uh, for more remote. 
which has certain benefits, it's certainly more eco-friendly um, and versatile, but also it's not always appropriate in every situation um, and it's not always as easy when you're not actually physically present. But we have had our eyes open to the potential for uh, remote, remote work. I think it's fair to say that the learning opportunities the fellows had during their RT work have added considerable value to their fellowship experience. And I think many would say that it's also helped them grow in, in many ways, uh, not just as an epidemiologist. Um, so here's just some examples of the international assignments the fellows have done. I'm not going to dwell on this because um, uh, Ashley and others have already sort of mentioned some of the uh, deployments or work activities that the RST have been involved in and, and fellows have been involved in most of these. Okay, so just some reflections from our fellows about what they took away. Um, so from the, some of the work with the RST, um, some things they've learned, such as that good quality data relies on the buying of many, many different people, most importantly from the community under surveillance, that trust is a key component of effective public health action, understanding the roots of mistrust is vital, Getting more data and visualizations can't solve your problems, but it can help you uh, look to where the right answers may be. Um, and we've learned more about cultural awareness, humility, and self-awareness. So that's really nice. This is what they've said. And in their words, uh, fellows, a deployment to WHO Geneva for the 2019 Ebola outbreak gave incredibly useful understanding of how international outbreak response works. While already interested to work on routine epidemiological reporting, I also learned about the logistics, financing, security and politics involved and many, many connections that would become even during the COVID-19 response months later. And for another fellow, my deployment with RSD gave me the opportunity to consider how, set, how to set up key aspects of Spain's and outbreak response in low resource settings and identify ways to obtain essential data when routine data is absent. My deployment enabled me to meet and work with professionals from other countries by building my professional network and creating new friendships. And I think really that is what it's all about. And I think that's really helpful. Um, in terms of where our fellows end up, you can see that the vast majority of them are working either in the national uh, public health arena or internationally. Um, and a couple of quick photos. So here you are, some of our previous cohorts, you'll recognise some reservists and indeed the Deputy Director of the RS, UK RST uh, in there. Um, some more cohorts have graduated recently who are working either in the national or international uh, health security field. Um, and here just um, our, 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 latest co our latest cohort, um, we've kept going throughout COVID situation, here's our socially distanced COVID aware cohort uh, in training, so we're trying to keep the pipeline going, it's supported through the RST, but the whole cohort will work with the RST um, engaging in, in the work programme. Um, and hopefully they will move into careers also supporting national and international health security. So there you go, there's a quick whiz through on the UK FETP. Thank you.